What's up, everybody? It is Sam Jesse here with the crew from the Locks of Saturday, Dom Bolts, Brett Smith. Fellas, week one is upon us. Week zero was just a little taste. We have a full slate here for week one. We're going to talk about three of the biggest games each week, and then we're going to just go into our full slate of picks, things that interest us. Um, not only games that we have on our personal cards, but just ones that seem interesting across the college football landscape. As always, Locks of Saturday is brought to you by Price Picks, the leader in college sports daily fantasy. Use code Locks of Sat. When you download the Price Picks app to place all of your daily fantasy wagers, and they will match your deposit up to one hundred dollars. So your first deposit matched up to one hundred dollars. It means you input fifty dollars for playing in the leading daily fantasy app. They'll give you a free fifty dollars of plays on the leading daily fantasy app. So a great deal from our friends at Price Picks. Again, that's code Locks of Sat. As always, check us out on TikTok at Locks of Saturday. On Twitter at Loxasat. Uh I think that does it. I think that's that's all the plugs. Guys, you ready to go? Week one. Yeah, finally here. Ready, ready to, go. to rock. Good week Dude. zero. How did everybody do week zero? One on Notre Dame spread. Over a unit positive. My sister so, said uh, that wasn't too impressive, but uh I, I I any winning week is a winning week. I will never apologize for a winning week. Nope. I don't afford to help on the season. Unit so. wise. Half a unit, but still four and two. We'll take it. It's nice we to say at some point it. in the season that I'm up money. That's not so that'll be sparing. So take a I'll picture of the scoreboard. Point. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, let's get into a Thursday night game happening at the stadium behind me at Rice Eccles Stadium in Salt Lake City, Utah. The Florida Gators traveling to Utah. This will be a really fun game, I think. Florida, this line has moved. A lot. It was started off at like eight and a half, nine points to Utah. It is now Florida at plus six and a half, two twenty, uh, two oh two, on the money line for Florida. Utah has revenge on their mind. Utah is clearly the better team, but a huge question mark in this one is Cam Rising, star quarterback for Utah, and his health. Brett, when you look at this game, we're big Utah fans on this podcast. They're one of the best against the spread teams at home in the country. I'm a little bit worried, though, if Cam Rising isn't 100%. Yeah, I think a lot of this game hinges on him. And I think the spread right now is saying, I think assuming he will play. So um, at six and a half, I think if he ends up being game time decision, um, I think that spread's going to be pretty darn close to a pick em, in my eyes, just because it's at Utah. But I think if I still had to, I think I'm still going Utah. I think that they are the better team on paper. Florida, Graham Mertz, not too exciting. Nothing exciting about him. Thought Florida was an interesting choice for him. Uh, I like Utah's defense, as always, at home. Uh, Going to be a tough one at night. I think they still get a win. Six and a half with Cam Rising, I'm happy with. And if they end up either going to a pick em or a dog at home without Cam Rising, I think I'm, I'm still taking them. Yeah, so the the most recent news is that Cam Rising will play, but maybe not every snap, and maybe won't be the won't be playing with the reckless abandon that we're used to seeing from him. So they do have a really good stable of running backs. They have good tight ends. I think it might just be about getting the ball out of his hands quickly, not asking him to do too much. Dom, this is one of the biggest games on the slate. It is Thursday, eight p.m. on ESPN. Who do you got? I like the Utes. I mean, if Cam Rising plays, that's a big question right now. But even without him being 100%, I mean, they have like a I – mean, their, their run game is superior. Their offensive line can run it down your throat. They don't really make many mistakes. And I think Utah's defense is going to be one of the toughest they've had in quite a while, especially their front seven. And I think if Florida has to rely on Mertz to, like, push the ball downfield and throw a lot because they can't run the ball, then it's going to be a really tough night for Florida. So – I think that's the most likely what we'll see is Utah kind of dominating in the trenches, getting a lot of run stops and making the Gators pass the ball more, which is not really what I think they should be doing. So I think Utah will pull it out. Yeah, we talked about it earlier, but Graham Mertz, just not a ton of confidence in him. So really curious to see what that Florida offense looks like. Wasn't great last year, even with Anthony Richardson. 
Uh, I got Utah as well at six and a half. I think they just play so well at home. That defense is really, really stingy. And I think their stable of running backs is going to do really well. Florida did revamp their defense in the transfer portal. So we'll see what they look like defensively. But I also think just the home field advantage for Utah is going to be a little too much. Can you guess the uh, elevation of Gainesville, Florida? Anybody? Five. The elevation? The oh, elevation in level. Gainesville, Florida. It is not below sea level. Five feet. It is, it is 177 feet. Can you guess the elevation at Salt Lake City? It's probably 7, over a mile high, right? 7,000. It's, it's pretty far up there. It is 4,327. So not quite a mile high. But yeah, that's pretty good. That's uh, going to be a factor. That's a factor. That is a but big factor. That big that big D lineman they got over at Florida, that 400-pound dude, I don't think he'll be doing very well that game. He's not going to do too well in that game. Uh, yeah, because college teams don't schedule these kind of games usually a lot of time and mm-hmm. go out there and do that. So it'll be definitely interesting. There's another high elevation game that we'll get to later on that I think is really, really interesting. Uh, but yeah, I got Utah on this one. Uh, I love the Utes. I think, again, people are doubting them this year. Uh, what's also interesting about this game is, you know, if we look at last season, that loss to Florida really knocked Utah out of the playoff picture. They would have been in the college football playoff with that win. It was really that one ridiculous run from Anthony Richardson that got them the win. So I think there's definitely some revenge in the minds of Utah, and they returned most of that team from last year. Any other thoughts on this game before we move on to our next one? Just hoping to see a good cam rising. It's always good. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, let's go on to our next game. This one at a neutral site in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is the North Carolina Tar Heels as two and a half point favorites against South Carolina. Really interesting game here between the two Carolina schools. This game will be on Saturday evening, 7.30 on ESPN. The over-under for this one, pretty high, 64.5. So, Brett, I'll ask you first about that game total. 64.5 is a big number, but these are two really dynamic quarterbacks, Drake May for Carolina and Spencer Rattler for the other Carolina. Yeah, I think South Carolina. I mean, I think think they can put up the points. Um, I think that the over will hit. Uh, I'm not super confident in that because it is a lot, but I think the over will hit. I give it like – give it a – one out of ten scale, I'm going to say six and a half. I think it would it more likely than not. Um, I think that's what the obviously it's always like said at one ten. So you shoot your choice, but I mean they that this team hung sixty two Tennessee last year, and this UNC team is very similar to that Tennessee team last year. Very little defense, especially some stuff over the top, but uh, a high powered offense. And I think South Carolina is going to be able to hang some points over the top, especially with Antoine Wells Jr. Preseason All American and Spencer Rattler obviously been in college forever. He knows what's going on. Um, and UNC defense is by far the, has always been their biggest question mark, but this year especially I think will be their biggest question mark. Um, they lost a lot, especially the secondary. They have nobody returning in the secondary, and they have guys from the three D last year coming up to play. So um, yeah, it's going to be interesting for UNC. I think you should expect to see Rattler throw the ball a ton. Yeah, and this Are is we a talking big picks game. too. Yeah, you go, go get my pick. pick. Yeah, go yeah, South, Car- South Carolina money line. I've been hitting at this game all year already throughout the offseason. Um, UNC, I think every year at the beginning of the year, they're super overrated. They get smacked in the mouth first few games. Then they kind of get together in the middle of the season, and then they lose like one at last – one or two games to finish like eight and four. And that's exactly, I think that's going to happen here. South Carolina is by far, but by far definitely a better coach team and definitely a tougher team. I think this is a really bad matchup for UNC for their first game. I think South Carolina, I think money line. Um, I think there's some alternate spreads you could take over two and a half. I think if you really want to get first, I think they would buy 10, at least 10. Yeah. So right now checking action network, uh, 54% of the bets are on South Carolina. This line has moved a point. It was one and a half to UNC. Now it is two and a half. Over under has increased a little bit as well from 62 and a half 
to that 64 and a half. Dom, your thoughts on the Tar Heels and Gamecocks? I'm actually surprised that UNC is the favorite because I just thought that after the end of after like the end of South Carolina season last year, that more people would be in on the hype and they'd be like Tennessee and Clemson back to back, two top ten teams. Granted, they weren't both in like their best form with injuries, but still two big wins. And I think that South Carolina wins this game. They're going to come out trying to prove a point. Their point is we can compete at a national level and we can like compete with these SEC teams, ACC teams, anyone, because that's what they want to be doing. They want to try to get in the college ball playoff, which is a stretch at this point, but that's the type of hype that they have there. I have buddies who go there, and I know that they all think they're making a run for it this year, so I know there's a lot of hype in the program. And UNC, I think, is going to take a step down from last year. I think their offense just isn't going to be as potent as it was last year. They lost Josh Downs, not many proven weapons so far in offense. They're trying to still see about eligibility stuff. But I like the over because I think that both defenses suck. <laughs> so, And I like uh, USC to win this game. And I think USC wins big too. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what the defense for UNC looks like because, I mean, this could if it doesn't work out this year with Mac Brown and Gene Chizik, they we could be seeing a changing of the guard at UNC. I really do believe that. You, you will. That is, it, you will. They they've had what one ten win season since Mac Brown got there, and, and a lot it, of talent, <laughs> and a lot of talent, and it has consistently been a really really poor defensive showing from UNC. In a bad conference, also a lot of in a bad conference. I think South Carolina has a lot of momentum coming into this season. Uh, they had, you know, the wins against Tennessee and the wins against Clemson. But other than that, last year, they were a pretty poor team. Um, obviously, they play one of the toughest schedules in the country every year. But last year, they just really, really struggled in some sense. Spencer Rattler was not good in most games. I, I think UNC is going to, I, I think they're going to come out ready to play in this game. I don't know why, but I just do not trust South Carolina. I, I do not think they're that talented of a team and if i'm gonna go in a really close game i'm gonna go with a better quarterback there is zero doubt in my mind that drake may is the better quarterback and i think he's good enough to elevate them like we're not just talking good college quarterback this is a guy who's top two top three overall pick in the in next year's draft so i'm gonna i'm gonna put my money on drake may and carolina blue i i just think south carolina too many times last year, they didn't look like a very good football team. And I know UNC had that as well. Defensively, they're a mess. But the, the turnover on UNC's defense doesn't bother me because the players they had last year just weren't that good. Uh, highly rated players out of high school, but they just weren't that good. So I'm not worried about the turnover uh, defensively for UNC. So I'm going to go North Carolina. Uh, I hate rooting for North Carolina, but as we always say, bet the numbers, not the teams. Uh, I also like the over in this game. I think you could see like 75 points scored in this one. Um, especially, you know, neutral field early in the season. It's going to be really hot in Charlotte. Uh, I, I, I think you could see some really tired defenses out there in week one. It's game day too, right? Game day's going there? Yeah, I think game day's going there. Um, the game day will be there, and then they go to LSU, Florida State on Monday or Sunday. Yeah, it's it's – I mean, it's a fun, it's a fun little rivalry, right? Like, I, I think it's two big state schools, two programs that I think are in really similar spots in terms of like they can recruit really well, but so can the people that they're recruiting against. Like UNC trying to get to the Florida State and Clemson level, South Carolina trying to get to the Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, like all that level. So I think it's a fun game. Um, I'm, I'm going Carolina. I don't love it. Confidence level really low in this game. What is your confidence level for this one? I'm confident. For South Carolina? Yeah. I'm confident nine. UNC is trash in defense. <laughs> that's my. That's pretty much my whole reason. That's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a fair enough reason. It's a fair enough reason. Well, let's go to two teams that historically are known for their defense and the what I think is just the game of the weekend, maybe one of the games of the year. It was one of the biggest games to start off last year. LSU. Two and a half point favorites against Florida State in Orlando, Florida. Two Heisman hopeful quarterbacks, two playoff worthy teams. Uh, Florida State, the money line for them is at plus 116. The over under is at 55 and a half. And again, this game is on Sunday at 7 30 p.m. on ESPN. Uh, Brett, 
Last year, LSU really, really outplayed Florida State, but they just made too many big mistakes and they kept Florida State in the game. What's going to happen this year? Uh, I think LSU is going to win this game just, I think, by more than, I think probably by a touchdown or maybe a little more, just for the sole fact. I think LSU made some big mistakes on the stretch and Florida State I mean, missed extra points. And Florida State, you know, that game went to overtime. Who knows what would have happened? Uh, we might have a different conversation about that Florida State team. So I think LSU is a sneaky team. We talked about the SEC preview. I think they're a sneaky team in the SEC this year. Jaden Daniels, I think there's definitely some money there for him on the Heisman. I think he is an electric player. He Coming from Arizona State, people questioned LSU. Like, I mean, he, really, he was good, but he wasn't that great, especially down the stretch last year, beating Alabama pretty much by himself. Uh, I mean, he really showed some flashes, and I think this LSU team as a whole is definitely better. Um, Brian Kelly, as much as he might not be a fit for LSU, there's no doubt he's a good coach, and he knows how to play in big games. I think this game just the the, let's put it this way: This is LSU's game. This they play these games all year, these big games against big teams. This is Florida State's game to make their statement if they're back or not. So there's a lot riding on this game for Mike Norvell, and I think even at home, it's three thirty game, I believe. Um, even if it was at night, like because like night games matter there, especially Doe Campbell with the uh, tomahawk chop and all that stuff. I think LSU is still the better team on paper this year. Florida State people talk about Jordan Travis. He's really good, but he kind of is like Josh Allen in the fact that he just kind of like mash all the people say mash all the buttons. So and he just kind of does to get the play done. He's not necessarily like a great, you know, drop back, pick you apart quarterback. And LSU's defense has definitely vastly improved. And I think that they're gonna give him trouble. Uh Johnny Wilson obviously is a huge target. Um, and I think she's got athletes to cover him. So I really still like LSU in this game. I probably, I'd say the three is safe, but I think they were my touchdown. You know, I think I tend to agree with you there. I, I think Jaden Daniels has kind of been less talked about for Heisman than I would have expected coming this year because he's one of the better quarterbacks in the in college this year. But it's a good quarterback battle. But these two teams are very different points. I think that Florida State is like just now trying to prove that they are on that level, while LSU is like they're trying to prove that they're still on that level. And I think I'm, I'm going to go with the team that has proven it and done it and did it last year winning an SEC West title. I'm going to go with LSU. They're returning a lot of the roster that got them that, that SEC West title, and I think that, that team's got much more talent than Florida State. Florida State's just going to be trying to come out and compete, I think, in this game. So I'd like LSU in a – Closely contested game. One thing to look out for, though, uh, Mason Smith, LSU is pretty much bestie line. going to be out for one game because of that NIL, like NIL thing he did. I think he to, had like signed an autograph prior to when it was allowed, so now he's suspended for a game. So that's something to watch out for, but I still think LSU gets it done. Right now, according to Action Network, 77% of bets are on LSU. Kind of a surprising Don't like amount. that. Don't That's like kind that. of a surprisingly <laughs> high number, I think, for That's such a closely right. contested game. Yeah, I think people just, like you had mentioned, I think just LSU pretty much played the worst game they could possibly play, especially in the bat second half last year, and missed an extra point to lose the game. So. Yeah, it was in, in terms of expected points added, margin was one of the more lopsided losses for a team that that overperformed um, LSU statistically, you look at the box score and you look at the expected points added and you look at echo ratio and all that advanced stuff probably should have won the game. Special teams really killed them. I'm going Florida state in this one. The reason I'm going Florida state is I feel like Florida state's strengths match up with LSU's weaknesses really well. LSU struggled in the defensive secondary last year, and they don't look to have gotten that much better. They did have to patchwork their defense a little bit. And when Florida state is going on offense, they're a well-oiled machine, just so many weapons on the outside. They have good tight end plays. Offensive line is good enough to give Jordan Travis time. I think it's going to be really hard for LSU to stop Florida state. I like Florida state in this one. I like a money line. I also like the over. Uh, 55 and a half is a pretty big number, 
But when I look, I, I think Florida State could score in the 30s in this one pretty easily. And LSU's offense does tend to have some stinkers here and there. Like I remember Arkansas, they weren't great. Texas A&M, they weren't great towards the end of last season. But overall, they can score pretty well. Uh, Jane Daniels is a trouble for any defense. So I'm going to go Florida State. I like the over as well. I think this is going to be a really fun game. Should be a Florida State pro crowd in Orlando, as it, last year was mostly LSU, that game happening in New Orleans. That's right. I wish they would have just played this home and home. Yeah, I, I thought they did. That's why I thought forgot. I, I just remembered that this in Orlando. I don't understand wanting to play this game in New Orleans and in Orlando. Just like you're right I'd there. Much see it in Death Valley and see it at Doe Campbell. Yeah, yeah. I um, I I think if you're going to take Florida State, you take money line. Don't take the spread here. I think yeah, that's the point. I, I agree. And you have plus one sixteen is not a ton of value in this one, but it's a little bit better. Um, Looking at what the payout for their spread is, I'm, I'm going to guess minus 110. So, yeah, you get a little bit more value at the money line. I think if Florida State is close or wins this game, I think they're going to do so like convincingly. Like, I think it's going to be because they have something in the matchups that LSU doesn't have. Um, you know, I, I don't see six, seven wide receiver. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. Um, a six, seven wide receiver will in fact do it. Yeah. I, I like Florida state in this one. I'm, I'm buying Florida state this year. I'm buying them. And I, I don't know if I love that, but I'm doing it. I'm buying them outside of this game. I think they can run the table in the ACC. I just think this is a tough one. If they, if they win this, if they win this game, it's going to be really hard for me not to bet them to make the college football playoff. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's totally fair. To because if they win this game, like if they go 12 and one, just lose the ACC and they go one and one against Clemson and have that win in Death Valley, they might still make the college football playoff. One, because of their brand, but two, because they would have two really good wins and at a neutral site and on the road. We'll talk about that next week, but I think that's something to look out for as well. If they win this game, uh, let's see, right now for the college football playoff, FanDuel has Florida State. At plus 380. They win this game. I think you're looking at plus 250 ish, plus 320, something like that. I think that might be worth it because they should roll through the rest of their schedule outside of Clemson. All right. Rest of the week. Huge, huge slate of games. Brett, we'll go with you. Just give us a couple games you love, over-unders you love, or even games that you're just simply interested in. I have a couple of those myself. So uh, let's just go for it. You want to just start one. ripping them off. Um, so let's talk about – I'll talk about some fun ones. Week one, Miami Bowl. That's awesome. Yes, of course, the Miami Bowl. Who could forget? I, I, like, I just actually placed it myself. I got Miami Ohio over 17. So it's three scores. I think I like Miami of Ohio. Brett Gabbert, playing Gabbert's brother, really good. Was in the transfer portal, but ended up not uh, ended up going back to Miami of Ohio. I think because he, he went in the portal super late and everybody kind of filled up, so he missed out his opportunity. My guess is has a really good year. He's back in next year, and you'll see him on a Big Ten team. That's just my opinion. Um, I actually like Miami of Ohio there. Um, I think Miami always starts the year slow. That's how it's kind of been for them. Even on second year with Tyler Van Dyke, I think, uh, or third year, I guess, um, was not impressed with them last year. This is, a, I think, this is a big year for Crystal Ball, even though it's only second year. Um, but I still like mine. Ohio plus seven. Uh, I like Clemson minus thirteen over Duke. I think Duke's not nearly as good as they were last year. I think they're a little overrated because they overperformed last year because of the crazy turnover margin. Uh, I think Clemson is vastly improved across the board, especially with quarterback. We talked about last week. Klubnik is uh, definitely better in terms of – he should have been the starter, I think, week like three last year. They should have just pulled the trigger even when they knew. They probably weren't as good, so they should have just let it ride. Um, we we'll talked about Utah, LSU. Uh, let's see what else I like. Oh, trying to go through the list here. Um, I like I actually Thursday night. Mm -hmm. Under 46 and a half North Carolina State UConn. 
I think under 46 yep. and a half. I think NC State's offense is going to be really bad this year. I think mm-hmm. over. I think just because even with Ane and Armstrong, I don't think they're going to put up a ton of points. I think their defense, they're going to run the defense. Lost a lot of offensive line. Armstrong doesn't really have any weapons around him. I think it's he's going to have to do it all himself. First game jitters. UConn at night. A lot of momentum in that program with Jim Moore Jr. I really like the under there. I think LSU wins the game. I think NC State might win the game on like 23 to like 10. I think that's what you're going to see. Um, then Dom, I also, what do you got? Oh, oh, you got it. Keep going. No, I got I got a bunch. So you, you, can, got a bunch. All right. you can flip around. Yeah. Um, ODU plus 16 against Virginia Tech. I think that – Really? Tech, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going there. I'm going there. I think the Tech wins, and I think it'll be like – not that close throughout, but I think they cap it at 14. I don't I don't trust Tech to blow out ODU from what I've seen. And I've seen ODU with some pretty talented. They've got this one receiver who's like crazy fast. And I could see him torturing us for like three touchdowns. So I'm just going to say that, Tech. Just, is that that? emotional edge? It may be. It might be. You know, <laughs> I'm going to say it's not, but it definitely is. ODU plus 16. I'll beat the game. So, I mean, I hope to God the Tech wins. Um, Colorado plus twenty one or plus twenty and a half. Just because. Okay, let's <laughs> let's talk about that game. Is that because twenty and a half? Twenty is a lot of points. A lot of points. Right? Yeah. Twenty is a lot from a team that you don't you haven't really seen a ton from. Like you don't know how good they are, so I think there's like chance. Well, they keep it well right, because they all played in the FCS last year. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like they were good. They were good there. Will it translate? Now's the time to see. So I'm gonna take twenty one. Travis Hunter will up. translate, not yeah. Shador Sanders immediately. Yeah. Shador Sanders half of the season life. I think Travis Hunter immediately makes an impact. Shador Sanders. I'm look. I'm looking this one up on Action Network right now. Sixty one percent of bets are on Colorado. Love that TCU. All right, at TCU. It's not good wow. for me, but we'll keep it rolling. And then no, I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I'll tell you that. I wouldn't bet it, but I, I don't hate it. Yeah. It's just a fun one. Next, um, Utah State plus 25 against Iowa. I think Iowa's going to win, but I don't trust Iowa to score 25 points, honestly. I think I'm taking the under on that game, actually. So that yeah, was one for of my sure. picks. So I, I think I'm taking I am, I am on Utah State as well. Uh, I don't they, think... they should be healthy at quarterback this year with like La, like less sight. I like Utah State to cover there. A lot of points. Yeah, I just don't think Iowa's going to score 20. I think they get 24 points, and that's that'll just be it. They can hold them to zero, and you cover. So, um, How about we go to you, Sam? Come back to me. You, go to me. Okay, there are a couple that I got. Um, I, like the, I like the UConn NC State under. I am a little worried, though, that we might see, you know, prime Brennan Armstrong against UConn and feel kind of dumb with that one. But I don't know. You, NC State does not have a ton of offensive weaponry. Uh, I really like Hawaii plus four and a half at home against Stanford. Stanford is Dude. terrible. They yeah, are god really awful. And you're getting four and a half. Hawaii looked pretty good against Vanderbilt. Yeah, they look really good. <laughs> I mean, it was really just a, a goal line interception. That was the difference in that game. Uh, look, Hawaii's never been not good defensively. They're not, but I think Stanford is really bad. You're four and a half points at home on the island. I like Hawaii there. Uh, keeping it out west for a couple, I'll be talked by Utah State. Colorado State plus 11 and a half at home against the Washington State. Colorado State should be vastly improved. They return a lot of talent. And I, again, they're a team that was like, like Utah State, was really injured last year and could never really get a foothold if they're healthy, which they look like they should be. Washington State didn't impress me too much last year. Uh, Cam Ward was iffy, so uh, I like Colorado State at home. And then the Roadrunners, meet me, Utah, uh, UT San Antonio. They're minus one and a half. Houston, another one of the worst Power Five teams in football. Uh, Houston has zero home field advantage whatsoever. I like UTSA in that one. Frank Harris coming back um, from a really, really terrible medical scare. Uh, had an infection in his knee after surgery, didn't know if he'd be able to ever play or let alone walk again. And here he is uh, going to start his fifth year for the Roadrunners. So I, I like Frank Harris. I like UTSA. I have that on the card as well. Yep. I like that one. 
Um, and the last one I'll go for this one is Western Kentucky minus 12 and a half against South Florida. They might score 70 points. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. So, and they get at home. Austin, Austin yeah. he's stat pattern. It's going to be like the fourth round of the draft, and somebody's going to take him. And it's going to be a really interesting conversation in training camp. He, the, the dude can sling the football. Yeah, he's better than Bailey's happy. Yes, he's better than Bailey's happy. Yeah. Who set NCAA records, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So, he's, yeah, uh, he's better. He's definitely more likely to have a pro career. I won't, I mean, I, I think it's going to be a battle between Zappy and Mac Jones this year, just because the Patriots have a lot going on. But we're not in a football podcast. Right? Before y'all get to one, this is one that I haven't decided on. And I'm curious to see what you think. Boise State plus 14 and a half at Washington. 14 and a half is a lot of points. Boise State won 10 plus games last year, is returning a lot of talent. I think Washington. That's tough. That's a lot of. I think that's a lot of points, even at home. I think. Yeah. In, uh, I think if they don't cover, I think they're, that means they're probably almost going to lose. I don't think they win by like ten. I think they're either going to win by three in a knockdown drag out at home, or they're going to Michael Penix is going to throw for four hundred eighty yards, and it's going to be like. I see that. Like four scores. I see Washington winning and Penix going crazy. That's pretty much all there is to it. Yeah. Right? Well, I don't even think it would be because Boise State's defense isn't good. I think it would be because their offense just can't stay on the field, and Washington just keeps getting possession after possession after possession. Um, I think that's a really interesting game, one you should definitely watch because it's two teams that they ex- they almost expect to be in the New Year's Six Bowl this year. Like If it's going to happen for Washington, it's this year, and Boise State, I think they ran through the Mountain West last year. Mountain West is down again. Uh, they have big hopes as well. So this that's an interesting one. That game is at 3.30. Um, Brett, back to you. Let's see. I like Penn State. A lot of points, but I, I'm, I'm eating the points. 20 and a half at home against West Virginia. West Virginia mm-hmm. is going to be really bad this year. I think Neil Brown's done. Doesn't make it through the season. We talked about that in the Big 12 preview. Penn State, I think they are a sneaky team in the Big 10. I think it's Michigan, two, and then – a tie, 2A, 2B, Penn State, Ohio State, best teams in the Big Ten this year. Um, I think Penn State could win the Big Ten if they win the Big Ten. I think they'll make the playoff. They have legitimately three NFL running backs, and then they have Drew Aller. All he has to do is just not turn the ball over, but he's also was the best quarterback in the country. And even though he's a freshman, I think they beat the brakes off West Virginia. They hate West Virginia. They have, this is you know an old rivalry. I think uh, that one's going to get ugly. Uh, what else I have? I, I actually I have a question for y'all. Yeah, go. Hit me with it. Do we think that San Jose State is a better football team than Nevada? Yes. Yeah, Nevada's pretty bad. Yeah. I The team total is crazy for yeah. USC. It's this like 52. This is what I'm saying. I'm not <laughs> – that, that jumped out at me. So, US – I mean – I mean, that's a shot. Yeah. I was thinking plus 38, but then again, Nevada's terrible. So Nevada's terrible. really bad. I think you take the team total for USC before the spread. I think okay. USC, oh, I mean, they just hung 56 on. Yeah, well, they just hung 56 on a team that's well, probably yeah, a little better than Nevada. Right. I think they'll put, I mean, Lincoln Riley, if we know him, he will. He doesn't care about running the score. He'll just, he'll score 77 if he, mm-hmm. if he, if he wants to. So. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another really interesting game. We talked about elevation, this game being played at the highest elevation of any university in, in the 48 states. Wyoming is hosting Texas Tech. Wyoming is plus 14. That game is at 7,220 feet of elevation. Wyoming is a really stingy defense. They are going to be good. They're terrible on offense, but they are a very, very good defense. I like under 50 and a half. I don't know if I want to take Wyoming in this one because I also really do like Texas Tech, but I think under 50 and a half. I I think you're going to be surprised at how good Wyoming is on defense. 
And I don't think Texas yeah. Tech wants to show too much in this game. What is up with Power 5 teams traveling to G5 schools? Like, it seems – like, I thought it was just Virginia Tech thing. We were in Tech with bad scheduling. But I'm looking at the slate. There's a lot of teams doing that. It's um, – there. I mean, there are a, a good amount of them uh, this week. Oregon State is traveling to San Jose State. We just talked about the Spartans. That's an interesting game. Uh, 16 and a half point favorites for the Beavers. Um, Brett, this is the new era of college football. It does not matter where you are. Yeah. We're just going to play. We're just playing ball. Nothing matters. We're just Nothing ball. matters. Uh, yeah, I, I, really interesting. Brett, I'm surprised you haven't talked about it. I'm going to set you up for it. The sicko game of the week. The Northwestern Wildcats at the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. <laughs> over under uh, a set at 39 and a half. Are you I, taking it? Um, I'm holding, I'm taking Iowa under his, I always take, you know, big 10, someone in the big 10 on the bottom half. I'm doing the mm-hmm. Iowa one this week. I think it's a game time decision for that one. I want to see what Northwestern after all this, after all that went down, they can see what, what they look like. You and haven't, you have an extra day to decide this game is at noon on Sunday. Yeah. So you got a little extra true. time. Well, I don't, like I said, game time decision. If I do well on Saturday. On, the, on my slate, I think it's I think right now I have nine games, nine picks on the slate. Um, if I turn that around, that might be a, I might toss that one late. But going forward after this, I mean, yeah, you will see some big ten unders from me again. Last year, last year I was hitting I think like sixty seven at right. I'm just betting between Iowa, Rutgers, Northwestern, and uh, somebody else. Pretty much any games they were playing in, Minnesota. Any games they were playing in, Dodger was hitting. It's crazy. This is also very sicko, but UMass didn't look too terrible in their first game. I was thinking the same I thing. saw that. I'm 38 the same. or 35. I'm, real, I'm, I'm personally hurt by what New Mexico State looked like. They just looked like they didn't practice oh, very much this offseason. <laughs> that was um, impressive. And they ended up, they got it together towards the end, but d- defensively they were shot. 35 and a half is a lot of points for a team that is quite literally brand new at Auburn. Um, I'm a little worried that just the size is going to play an issue in this game. And when we see this with the SEC teams early, like they cover these ridiculous spreads because they lean on the other team and they can just run the ball up the middle. Like Alabama does this all the time. LSU does it sometimes like, but 35 and a half is a lot of points. And I'll tell you, yeah. it, UMass, UMass had some dudes. They they looked like a D1 football team where they normally do not. They proved they could win a football game last week. So no. They yeah. did, in the fact, me- win a football game. New Mexico got to get rid of the ponchos now. They were so sick, but they got to get rid of them. Oh, gosh. They, they just, yeah, they, they had trouble. You can't so, wear I'm a, not giving up. I'm not giving poncho. up. Can't wear a poncho like that and then go yeah, uh, it's a tough, tough scene. Nebraska at Minnesota. Minnesota minus six and a half. I think I like Minnesota there. I think I, I think like, like Minnesota, Minnesota too. too. I think we yeah. learned after Eric Campbell that that rule might not have the handle on the program like he thought he did. Yeah. That was a tough video to come out today. Yeah. What happened? And, uh, what happened? And starting, um, their starting tight end who is supposed to be one of the better players, correct? Or my think um, I think he. I. I don't know if he was. Oh no, he's the backup to. Oh uh, no, he was the backup. So he, no, he, I'm thinking of the other guy. But go ahead. Yeah, he. Uh, he broke into a a vape and liquor shop. Oh, I did see that. Yeah, yeah. I saw. Yeah, he's gonna go. Still like sixteen hundred bucks worth of stuff. It's like. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna go to jail, doing, man. Like. Yeah, I. I like. I like Minnesota in that one too. It's they have a they they'll have a decent home field advantage. Um, Minnesota is going to throw the ball a lot more this year, and I think I'm I'm really interested to see that. And I just I don't trust Nebraska yet. We got we got to wait and see. Quarterbacks going to be interesting for them. The Jeff Sims, who great athlete, can't really throw the ball, and then Casey mm-hmm. Thompson, who's kind of the same player. So, yeah, don't know if don't bigger. know if I like that. So, uh, um, one of the bigger game totals of the week is Coastal Carolina at UCLA. This game is. Uh, well, last year we would have called the graveyard shift game. 
ten thirty Eastern kickoff. Uh, Coastal Carolina's fourteen and a half point dogs, but Grayson McCall is back, back again. He is not leaving Conway, South Carolina anytime soon. Sixty five and a half is a lot of points. Oh, Jeremy Tadwell, so that kind of scares me. Um, who knows? They might, they might be better. I don't know. Kind of yeah. like Nick last year, so they're pretty bad defensively last year. Well, one of the worst in college football. Going up against Chip Kelly. Carson Steele, sneaky Carson Pac Steel. 12. Sneaky Pac 12 player of the year. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, so, Boom. yeah, I. Give me a bow next. <laughs> uh, we have, let's see, where, where is it all? Is Working playing this weekend? I, are they? I, I didn't see them. Yeah. Portland uh, State. That's why it's not on the slate for that one. Uh, we haven't Oregon, talked about one yet. I, don't the, I haven't seen. I don't have the line in front of me because we're in the state of Virginia, Tennessee, and Virginia. Anybody know what the line is right now? Um, twenty-eight. I, Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, I think you take ten. I think you just don't watch that one. If I'm going to be totally <laughs> honest with you. If you want to see something absolutely disgusting, look up the game that UVA played at Tennessee in the mid '90s. It's the worst uniform matchup in the history of college football. Trust me. Yeah. It what, is. What colorways are we going with? What colorways? Um, Tennessee was wearing their white helmet, orange jersey, and orange pants. UVA was wearing their uh, orange helmet, white jersey, and orange pants. Except oh. you have two slightly different shades of orange. It's hideous. It's revolting. Um, yeah, that. Yeah, don't you never yeah. watch that? No. Yeah, look up that picture online. It is. It's shocking. Uh, I'm. I'm looking up. I, I'm curious to see what level of bets there are on Tennessee for that game. That game's being played in Atlanta, correct? Yes. Yeah, so it's uh, 28 points, uh, minus 28 for Tennessee. 60% of the bets are on Tennessee. 28 is a lot of points, but I'm – yeah, UVA is is going to be pretty, pretty bad. How many UVA fans do you see making that trip to Atlanta? 12. Maybe, yeah, like five. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, that's it's going to be a lot of Tennessee fans there in Atlanta. Not too, not too bad of a drive from Central Tennessee to, to there. All right, guys. Anything else? There is one game that I did want to talk about. That I think can be really interesting. That is South Alabama at Tulane. Two teams that won ten plus games last year, and two teams that have conference title aspirations. South Alabama, watch out for them. They returned some of the most talent in the country. They were really good last year in the Sun Belt. Uh, they are six and a half point dogs in New Orleans for that game. Two things. One, really, really tough game for Tulane to repeat um, as a New Year's Six team. However, Tulane gets Ole Miss at home, and they get this South Alabama team at home. Both of those teams could be in the top 25 very regularly this year. If Tulane runs the table, I'm just saying Cincinnati did it a few years ago. Cincinnati it has started happened. way higher. That's they did. That's the thing. They started at but six in the country. I would say I would say between Texas, San Antonio, South Alabama, and Ole Miss, Tulane might have three higher ranked wins than Cincinnati did. Because remember that Indiana team that they beat stunk. Oh yeah, they were really bad. And that Notre Dame team they played wasn't that they great. Beat, only went eight and four, I think. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They weren't. They weren't that great. Yeah. Tech so, almost beat them that year. They should have beat them. But. Yeah. So I think Tulane to. Tulane could have one of the better resumes in this one. Um, really interesting. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, and I think South Alabama is a really good team. And um, I think that's a really interesting game. I don't have a pick either way at six and a half. I think that line is pretty correct. Uh, we'll see what Tulane looks like without Spears on offense. But I think it's a really fun game. If you have a chance to tune into it, we should watch it. I just yeah. can't believe that South Florida Western Kentucky game is at 70. Did, did I, I mean, Western Kentucky might <laughs> legit could score 65. I know, but it's just crazy. Yeah. We didn't yeah, talk dude. about um, Clemson at Duke, right, on Monday? I know we haven't. Said, 
I briefly said something, but we can talk about it real quick. I, I have Clemson 12 and a half. Yeah. I'm not I'm buying Duke this year. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's what I said. I was like, there's no way. Crazy turnover margin last year. Everything went right for them. Uh, I think it's a same, it's the same Duke team, maybe a little worse on defense against a much improved Clemson team across the board. Yeah, I think this could be a uh, – I, I, I like Clemson a lot. Yeah, I, I like Clemson a lot. You can blow out. That's what you're looking for. Could be. There'll be more could Clemson be. fans there than, than Duke fans probably. Oh, for sure. For sure. All right. I did want to do one quick thing um, at the end of this, and I'm not going to hold you to this, but I just want your idea. Team of destiny for the 2023 season. This is your team that you are just riding with this year that you think is going to cover spread or they're going to hit the over or their games are always going to hit the under who one team that you're just going to say, this is my, this is my system play of 2023. We'll end it with this. So it have to be a team or can it be just like. It doesn't have to be a team. Okay. Well, I mean, I just, I think. I still think the bottom half of the Big Ten unders. I still think is a is a great play. I think there's bottom none of the bottom. Under. Yeah, I think none of those teams improved. If anything, all of them got worse. Purdue, Rutgers, Northwestern, Iowa's probably about the same. Uh, even though they're probably not bottom. Uh, your top half, I think, is really good. And Wisconsin improved a lot. I think so. I think if you take like the bottom five teams of the Big Ten and the unders in those games, I think. You're going to have a good time. I have – well, if you're talking about, like, sneaky, like, Team of Destiny to win the championship, I I would think it's Michigan this year. I think that, like, it's now finally their time. They've been waiting well, a while. I, I have Michigan to win the national title. I do have that bet. Yeah, I don't think you can sneaky. call them sneaky to the number two team in the country. No, I was going to say my sneaky pick oh, oh, that's sneaky with pick. Washington. Washington is my okay. sneaky – our course, yeah, that's pretty sneaky. They'll cover a lot of spreads. I think that, like, they'll win the Pac 12, they'll cover a lot of spreads, win the Pac 12, be like contending for a college ball playoff spot at the end of the year, which is like much more than they could have expected a couple of years ago. So, I think they're your team of destiny. I agree. I'm going with the team right behind me, I'm going with, with Utah as my team of destiny. Uh, I don't have them making the college football playoff or winning the Pac 12. But I do think this is a team that is so much better, again, than what people think. Again and again, people doubt Utah. They're over under for the years, eight and a half. Uh, They're not picked to win the Pac-12. They do have one of the tougher schedules of anyone in the Pac-12. But I, I do really like this Utah team. They return a ton of talent, especially in defensive front seven. So I, I really like Utah, but I'm with you. I'm, I'm big on Michigan. I think they win the national title this year. They're insanely talented, especially on both lines of scrimmage. So I, I think Michigan is – I have them at plus 850 on FanDuel, which is a little bit better price than what you get on DraftKings, I, I believe, who's still at 750. Um, yeah, guys, it's going to be a great season. I'm very excited. There is so, a lot of congestion so. in the top ten. Yeah, I mean, just hoping to go one and zero in Lane Stadium this weekend. I'll be there. Just, so, just I got I, for what it's worth. I, I have the Hokies. I think Old Dominion's going to be a pretty Old Dominion's in a rebuilding, a massive rebuilding year, um, and I think Virginia Tech got vastly more talented. So uh, I'm going to go with the Hokies, but I understand all of your uh, all of your constraints. Oh, You're probably smarter than I am. Yeah. Oh, we'll see, I guess. I guess we'll see Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Brett, do you have the Hokies covering 15 and a half, I believe, is what it's at right now? Yeah. I mean, they could win like 31 to 14 in the cover spread. So, yeah. I think it is like, I, I, in all honesty, I do think there is a world where tech controls the game and ODU backdoor covers. Like the game could be 31 7. Four. Yeah. It's like 31 yeah. 7 going into the fourth quarter. Yeah. And then. Oh, do you put something? Because Virginia Tech won't have a lot of time to put backups in this year. I think they, if Tech is leading by a bit, they'll play some younger guys on defense. The entire two deep is basically true freshman on defense. And, and I think you could see Old Dominion score a touchdown late cover. That stuff happens all the time. So uh, 
should be interesting. I'm excited to be back in Wayne Stadium. And I'm excited for college football. This is going to be a great week one. I think there's a lot of, there's not as many big ticket games as usual, but I think there's a lot of really, really interesting games that are going to go a long way in determining the outcome of the college football season. Guys, any last thoughts as we wrap this one up? Thank you, Brad. I'm done. Awesome. Well, we'll be back next week. Again, code locks of sat on prize picks uh, helps us out. And prize picks will help you out by matching your first deposit up to $100. Don Bolts, sign us off. Go Hokies.